Welcome, welcome to the Master Circle with Mosaic Nonprofit Development. I am glad that you're here to join us today with our monthly innovative fundraising techniques. So the Master Circle is where we get together every month and we answer questions and do um, innovative stuff that you have suggested throughout the year so or throughout the month. I am really pleased to, to have you join us today. So um, as we get started, there's a couple of things that we wanted to, uh, to cover. I want to, too, to let you know, if you haven't joined us before, the Master Circle is brought to you by Mosaic Nonprofit Development. And Mosaic helps you get really effective fundraising results for your nonprofit through skill building and fundraising education. And we help people through online courses like today's live Master Circle session, workshops, and one-to-one -one fundraising coaching. It's really focusing on what's going to advance your cause. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, want to make sure that you can hear us. Sometimes uh, the audio might cut in and out, so you've got a couple of options. If um, you are unable to hear, try going ahead and using the phone number to call in. You can see it's right there at 470-200-0302. And when you dial in the, for the audio connection, you can use access code 411-922. Dash eight eight four, and when the pin request comes up after um, you enter your audio, just ignore that and go ahead and um, and enter it in. You should be able to hear everything. So, another thing that's special here about um, our platform is that we are going to be looking to you for questions as we go. So, the first thing, again, if you have sound issues, I want you to go ahead on the right hand side of your screen is your control panel, and you will find the question box. And if you could go ahead in and just to make sure that we are all um, t tied in and we can all hear and everything's working, go ahead and just type me in the question box a yes, yes, I can hear you. And this is everything is working. So I want you to warm up your fingers and, and get, uh, get familiar with how the, the chat box is working there because we are going to ask you several questions throughout today's uh, session. Great, got some good feedback. Let's see. Yes, absolutely. So it sounds like sounds working. That's good. Okay, guys, come on. Wiggle your fingers. We've got some good responses. I want to make sure everybody checks in. Yes. Great. We've got Ingrid. Welcome. Karen, that's great. Glad to see you. Fabulous. Okay, wiggle your fingers, guys, and let me know if you can hear me. Okay. All right. So now as we're talking through our question box, this is how the master circle works. If you've joined us before, um, you'll know that you might remember that we receive questions about fundraising throughout the month. And so we will be answering those questions that we've received throughout our presentation today. But this is an interactive session. So if you have questions about the fundraising material uh, as we're going through, I want you to, again, use that question box because we will answer questions as we, as we move through uh, our presentation. And just to also give you a heads up um, that we will be answering questions at the end. We have a special uh, place to, so as you think about the material that we talk about today, or if you have a question that has nothing to do with anything that we covered today, we'd love to, to have you there. So I want you to keep your eyes out for that, for that particular uh, slide. So, excellent. Okay, great. So welcome, Denise, and welcome, Ingrid, and welcome, Carol. Fabulous. Glad to have you here today. We've got more people signing on as we go, so just make sure, don't forget where that question box is. As we go, we're going to get started today. We are talking about end of your fundraising. That rocks. I think it's a very timely issue uh, as far as end of year giving. So it's cool, again, because here we are at the very end of the year. We can really get some ideas and some, some information into your hands so that you can actually implement it even today for your cause. So as you're, you're moving here, as we look down kind of the uh, last tunnel for the end of uh, end of what's happening as far as fundraising. So I happen to be Heidi Hancock. I'm the principal of Mosaic Nonprofit Development, and I absolutely love helping people do fabulous things to uh, raise money for their causes. I happen to have raised over seventy million dollars for nonprofits throughout my career, and joining me today is my partner in crime, David Svet, who is a fantastically wonderful marketing and communications guru. David, say hi. Hello, folks. Good to be here with you, Heidi having a nice day today. It's good that we've got a nice crowd here. Uh, Year-end fundraising is a big deal and there's a lot of marketing involved and hopefully we'll cover a lot of that today and answer some of your questions. My background's in marketing communications. I've been working for nonprofits for over 25 years uh, with everything from corporate identity and branding to direct marketing to internet-based marketing. Let's get to it, Heidi. 
Sounds good, David. We've got you covered. All right, so here we go. Year-end fundraising. Oh, my. All right. Well, I see we've got some more fuzzy animals today. If you've joined yes, us in the Master's do. Circle before, you know that David is particularly fond of, uh, of animal causes. So we, we like to do a, nas a National Geographic kind of approach to fundraising. So what's up with this here elk? What's, what does that have to do with fundraising? No, no, not an elk, Heidi. Um, this is a caribou. It's a caribou, also known as a reindeer. So appropriate for the holiday season, I thought we'd start off with a reindeer. Uh, they're a big part of the Santa Claus story here in the States. So, uh, Hedy, why don't you set the stage for us a little bit and tell us what we're going to cover as far as end of year giving. Okay, well, end of year can be a very, it's an important time for an organization, but it's also an important time for your donors. And what we're going to focus on today is how can you get the most out of the best fundraising season without wearing out your donors. I know we all kind of walk that very razor thin line or sit on the fence when it comes to over communicating or over asking versus not asking enough, making sure that you're heard. You don't want to irritate people. You don't want to drive them away. But at the same time, especially at end of year, it's really important that we, uh, we reach out and make sure that the connection is good. So some of the things that are important to know about end of year fundraising is, is that 40% of funds for nonprofits, if you think about this, this is amazing statistic, are raised in the months of November and December. 40% um, of causes fundraising happens. Another thing that you want to think about as far as traffic and increased activity is, is that 41%, again, that's just a little bit less than half of donors will visit your website. They're going to check you out online before they make a donation. Whether they make that donation online or through another way, they're going to research you and get to know you online first. And then the last thing that's pretty amazing about end of year gifts is, is that 51% of people were more likely to give a charitable donation uh, as a holiday present rather than um, going out and shopping and purchasing uh, gifts. And we've already started to see some of those uh, intentions pick up this early in the season, even before Black Friday. Oh my, David. Wait a minute. Do I really want to ask, but David, are those boobies? That's a good question, Heidi. I can see why you're confused about that. These, uh, these in fact, are not boobies. Um, these are Kenyan gannets. Uh, they're a very close relative of the booby family of birds. Um, this is uh, kind of apropos for year-end marketing and fundraising. This is pretty much what it sounds like this time of year with all the nonprofits getting together, trying to hit their numbers in this last part of the year. It's just this cacophony of noise where everybody and their brother is out sending out direct mail, email, online, jumping up and down, shouting that uh, you need your funding. Um, it basically comes down to communication overload. Um, I mean, have you noticed how much stuff you're getting on your own, much less the stuff that you're sending out this time of year? It's crazy. Um, you're getting more of everything. So... With year-end, it's important to not wear out your donors. It's a time of year to be different, not necessarily louder. Now, you can imagine being on this beach with, with all of these gannets, the, the cacophony of noise that that would be. You wouldn't be able to hear yourself think. Well, for your donors, it's kind of the same thing. They're getting bombarded daily with asks in the mail. They're getting them in the email. And it, it really gets to be a bit much. And if you want yours to stand out, you may want to look at what everyone else is doing and try to be different. If they're being loud, maybe you shouldn't be. The trick is going to be to tie your organization's story to the season. And if you can give a seasonal ask that tugs at heartstrings, uh, and there's a positive aspect of the holidays that you can... Um, show how you serve that's missing, and tell your donors about it. A well-written personal letter on, on your letterhead in a business envelope can be more effective than a huge direct mail campaign. Um, it's a time of year for, for friends and family for your donors. So you kind of need to insert yourself into that family in order to, to, to get something going. Oh, great, David. <laughs> that looks like hyenas and vultures. Yeah. Now, please fill me in. What does that have to do with end of year fundraising? Well, end of while, year ask. while you're inserting yourself into your donors, friends, and family circle, 
this is about the last thing you want to look like, a, don't, a vulture or a hyena. And with all the noise that's being made this time of year, it's really easy to end up looking like this. So that gets us to our first question, Heidi. Um, we've got one from Jonathan B. that came in earlier this month. Wants to know, how can we increase, uh, increase from our base without adding new appeals? Oh, excellent question, Jonathan. That, and especially at this time of year, um, if we're thinking about all of the different, all of the work that's being done that you're doing every, anyway in fundraising, plus all of the work of running new campaigns, figuring out how to use what it is that you already have um, to raise more money is a really great track to take. And there's lots of opportunities that you can do so that you're not adding new campaigns and you're not starting new initiatives. Okay, so first thing that we want to think about is let's look at how many... Um, Ways so you may have an existing campaign or existing theme message that you're getting out during this this uh, particular time of year. But we're going to start out with really taking that one single message that you have and really getting you're going to wring every last bit of juice out of it. So you're going to make sure that it's truly um, placed across multiple multiple channels. So for an example, if you have an end of year letter, if your if your fundraising campaign at the end of the year um, is a direct mail letter. Um, you're going to, instead of launching multiple campaigns with different themes and different purposes, you're going to just resend or use that letter, that same kind of um, request, and you're going to tweak it a little bit. You might send it several times. You'll, you might have a deadline countdown in it or a goal that you're reaching or a program that you're supporting that you can highlight in each of your iterations. But don't be afraid to send, again, if it's, a, if, uh, if it's multiple multiple installments on your channel that you're working with. Another thing that you can do um, is you're going to take an end of your letter and promote it with personal touches. So now we're going to really go multi-channel multi here with your end of your um, direct mail fundraising letter and you're going to take that uh, letter and those themes in it and you're going to support it. You're going to talk about, about it on your online, um, your email campaigns or your social media. You're going to let people know that the campaign's underway um, and that they should look in their, in their, e in their mailboxes that something's, something's coming and uh, you can kind of enhance that or give a couple of bumps every couple of days to the mail that you actually have on the ground, the snail mail that's on the ground. Another thing that's fun at the end of the year is uh, try it, make it a game. Um, one of the things that, uh, that, that uh, in an organization that I worked with, with at this particular time of year, and, I, and you know I uh, live in Boston, so it's kind of cold here, especially as we get towards uh, December and then uh, the end of the year. But what my, the organization that I was working with did at the end of the year is that they started, they created a scavenger hunt and they placed little objects all around the city and um, encouraged as part of their campaign uh, the stories of people who found um, the objects and what kind of donation um, they made in finding those objects. So you can think of kind of fun stuff that you can do to take or re-energize a current campaign that you have. And gaming is always fun, especially at this time of year. We're feeling a little more festive and we want to do something a little bit different. Don't forget to um, think about teams. So um, if you've got a team, and again, the scavenger hunt was a great, um, a great example, but so you might have a game and then you're going to create teams. You might have um, people who are in charge of creating an overall um, either reaching a specific goal or acquiring a certain day, uh, uh, level or um, reaching out and supporting or representing a particular program. And you want to highlight the team members and their experiences as they, as they go through so, that, so you're kind of living vicariously um, through them. So teams are a great way to also duplicate all of your efforts and empower other people to take your messages um, out in your fundraising on their behalf with their endorsement. So teams are a great thing, especially at the end of year. Um, don't forget, if you're thinking about multiple channels, don't forget about all of those events that you have. Now, you can use your events that are already on the calendar for this year, and you're going to include a part of your fundraising message in your events and make sure that they're tied together. Again, your online messages, you're going to wear out all of your copy. You're going to wear out the images that you're using for your, your campaigns. You're just going to use them in multiple installations, whether they're online, they're in your events, whether they're going through that direct mail um, process. But really think about multiple, multiple channels. You can build a special landing page, um, and you can do those very quickly, probably in somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes um, with some of the different um, of 
and free platforms that are out there as far as creating some online campaigns or a place on your website that you're actually driving people to to talk about the specific end of your campaign that you have going on. So think about using landing pages and using your different um, channels to drive traffic to that so that it's kind of your collection box um, for there. Now, the important thing here as we get to the end of year, um, if you want to use a calendar. Now, everybody is looking at the calendar, and whether they're looking at the calendar because it's coming close to holiday time or because they can't wait for their vacation to start or they're looking to see um, what kind of uh, events that they have to go to and their calendar is really tight and filling it up, you can also use that for your, um, your end of your uh, campaigns. So you could create a calendar and share a little date book or a pass book. Sometimes um, you have... Um, Again, going back to kind of the game theory, you might hit different stamps or different um, endorsements as you move through the time frame of the end of the year um, and share those with your donors so they can get a checkbook uh, or checkbox on their, uh, their calendar that they have attended um, certain, certain numbers of events. A great thing that you can also do if you put all of your end of year fundraising activities onto one calendar and share that with, their, with your donors, um, then that also lets them kind of pick and choose um, different ways to be involved and different things to support your campaign. And they will oftentimes support your campaign in more ways than one. So you're actually achieving a couple of different goals when you um, share all of the different ways that um, your end of your campaigns are taking place. Um, this is that, again, we give now. Donors' behaviors are changing. We're not just giving in one way and we're not just giving one time. Even for a campaign that's got two months on it, right? end of your campaigns. We've got two months about left. So um, when you place those opportunities in front of people and they can choose like a menu how they want to be involved, you might find that you're going to have a good segment of your supporters who typically support your organization at the end of the year, either doubling up or supporting across many different, uh, if you might see them at an event, you're going to get you know, that direct mail, you might participate online. Um, whatever it is, but if you lay it out on a calendar for them, that gives it kind of, again, a fun way to select and to participate in multiple ways. Another very um, helpful thing that you can do during the end of the year fundraising time to kind of keep it under, under control without adding new appeals or adding new um, campaigns is to partner up. Everybody is out on the street at this particular time um, fundraising. It is, again, as we saw at the beginning of the session, the most uh, effective time or the most lucrative time for fundraising during the year. And so finding a partner that's usually a non-competing organization. So you don't necessarily want to partner up with someone who's in your space, who's doing um, the work that it is that you do or similar work, but maybe an organization that is completely different. Um, one of the ones that we looked at, on our blog was the partnership between the One Foundation and Heifer Organization. Now, Heifer is a, a multinational um, nonprofit organization that uh, provides animals and self-sustaining um, classes and helps people out of poverty by providing animals. And the One Foundation is a, a campaign organization. It's more of a, um, a, a charitably driven awareness building organization that, again, they're both dedicated to alleviating poverty, but they, move, they work in very, very different spheres. And so they teamed up together to promote each other's uh, end of year campaigns and to um, talk about uh, how it is that they are syn synchronous in um, delivering on the mission, but by working in very different ways. So partnerships can be a fun thing to do and a great way to introduce a whole new set of donors um, without any extra work on your part except for managing the relationship of the partnership um, into your organization. So That's good to know, Heidi. Uh, adding partners and teams, building up your own herd, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> It looks like a herd of what are those buffalo, David? What have we got? Well, uh, haven't you seen the Lion King, Heidi? Come on, those are those are <laughs> wildebeests. All right, they look oh. a little like water buffalo, but they're skinnier. They're wildebeests. Um, <clears throat> they're trying to get more donors into your herd, so I thought we'd we'd have a herd here. Brings us to our next question. Herd. That's a yeah, great one. That's a good herd. <laughs> um, they're docile. Uh, we got a question from Patrice. Patrice R asks. Um, how can we get new donors at this time of year? We have a good donor base, but it needs to be bigger. So they're not, not hitting their numbers and need a bigger donor base. 
Ooh, ooh, good question, Patrice. And, and uh, we always, that's a fabulous one as far as donor acquisition. And um, end of year is actually a fantastic time to to focus on new acquisition. And as sometimes it might seem a little counterintuitive because if we look at the field of what's going on and we look at all of the clamor of everybody talking and everybody trying to raise, um, actually, your messages, as even if they are competitive messages and they're, they're out there and you're doing that, people are more inclined to be giving at this time. So it's a great time to go out and beat the streets and really focus on donor acquisition. So here are some things that you can do, um, especially at end of the end of the year. So the first thing I want you to think about is how do you widen your target? So you have a list. You have your donor base right now. Um, and then you have maybe some other ways that people are starting to get involved with your organization that you typically start to start the donor development process to. Well, I want you to think about taking a really wide look at those other lists right now. Um, people who are farther away, people from... Um, similar organizations. Um, this is a great time to purchase lists um, if you're working in the direct mail or work with your mail house um, to adding uh, lists to your to your uh, campaigns here. And this is probably about the only time of the year that you can really um, take a little extra risk with those new acquisitions. I mean, new acquisition is not inexpensive, so you want to manage it. But um, really widen your target list to start with and think about the different places that you can just add to your list on an acquisition basis for your, for your existing campaigns. And that includes the trying the new list. The other thing that you want to think about is who is it that you're targeting? Um, and as we watch how philanthropy is developing, that you want to not be focused on the great big major donors and you certainly want to make sure that you're accessible to everybody, but you are looking at the middle class. Wherever it is that you are, especially at this time of year, the middle class um, tends to have more disposable income that they will move around more fluidly. The, the, the larger donors, the major uh, gifts and the, and the significant donors tend to have a, 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 a gift plan or a philanthropy, a philanthropy plan. Oh, I can talk today. Uh, <laughs> in place, especially at the end of the year as it comes down, they've already measured out their gifts and they're really going to be making that there. So... Think about, again, if you think about how is it is it that you would communicate and what would be interesting to that specific um, uh, class, that middle class with the disposable income and more um, fungible uh, uh, focuses, that's going to be another way to uh, get that together. So sharing with another organization is also a great way to add to your uh, herd, to add to your lists. Um, again, this, this may be either a similar or a non-competing organization, but you may offer to promote their fundraising campaigns or their messages or to position them as a partner or to maybe you're going to have an exchange where they promote your message or they share their list with you and, and, and give you access to communicate or to um, release a campaign to their list, and you might also do that same for them. Um, so sharing with another organization is a great way just to tap into an entirely new prospect list. And again, if, the, if you're looking for similar interests as far as targeting your list or segments, similar interests to what your organization um, does. Don't forget now, uh, another thing that even in the, the fast-paced world that we live in, don't forget to ask your social media contacts to share and to retweet. Um, just the simple act of putting the please retweet increases your campaign reach exponentially. And the funny thing about that is, is that it's something that you can do very quickly. Um, we've, again, we've got particularly short attention spans, especially at this time of year. And if you spell it out for people, if you give them, if that's your call to action, please retweet, please share this. Um, again, you're empowering other people to do that. And that's something that they can do quickly and they don't have to think about it. So it's not making a big commitment. But if you don't ask them to do that, if you if you expect them to do that without um, asking them or telling them to, to please do this, um, the numbers significantly go down. So make sure that you, you include that. Please share message in everything that you do. And it's not just limited to social media. You can also share um, your printed materials. Uh, if you're sending at this time of year, if you've got your case statement or if you've got your um, brochure that, that hands out, that's a wonderful way to ask people to spread the word about what it is that you're doing. So think also when you're asking for sharing beyond your social media. And another thing that you can do to add to the herd is, is that you can use cost-specific non-local messages. Now, what does that really mean? 
Well, that means that when you're communicating about the impact or the need of what it is that your organization does is that you're taking it outside of your organization's reach. You're talking about the entire field. You're talking about the need for what it is that's happening in the world um, and helping helping illustrate kind of a global feeling of the impact that your cause has and that by becoming part of the family uh, as a donor that that person is also helping you grow uh, and make a significant impact on the overall um, non-local message. It also helps you reach out beyond your boundaries, which is why we're using or suggesting at this end of year that you do use non-local messages because it is the time of year where we can reach out beyond our, our typical communities or the boundaries that separate our donor bases um, or the work that it is that we do and we can start to gain attention or um, similar kinds of uh, like-minded people who are already inclined to support your kind of organization. You may find donors from other areas that you haven't worked with before. So your herd should grow um, significantly at end of year if you really decide to work on new acquisition. What do we got next? Those are, those are some good ideas, Heidi. Let's, let's try something new. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is this new guy about? What is this? It looks like an octopus. It does. It looks a little bit like an octopus. I love these guys. I'm running into them when I'm diving. This is a cuttlefish. That's actually a fish. They are awesome. These things are so cool. They can change the texture and color of their skin to either blend in or stand out, uh, depending on what they need. They can either blend in and hide to, to hunt or stand out to fend off a predator or to find a mate. Uh, this one, you can see it's blending into the leaves, so its color is kind of leafy. Its texture is kind of leafy. Um, they do all kinds of things. There's um, another one like, like this that uh, it looks like coral, um, and you can see it's... Uh, got spines all over it and is looking kind of coral. Or this one um, that really <laughs> stands out. I mean, he's not trying to hide in the grass at all. He's even actually looks pretty happy. Um, brings us to our next question. Um, trying to stand out. Uh, Tony G asks, uh, my executive director insists uh, that she write the end of the year solicitation each year. Oh, boy. They all sound the same. <laughs> She's not a great writer. <laughs> Ouch. Um, what else can we do to get past this? Ah, uh, uh, the institutional message at holiday time or at end of year giving. That is that. Now that's. I mean, that's something that I hear or encounter oftentimes with causes. I'm sure that will be familiar to to folks on our call today. So trying something new. Well. And that's a, that's a great way to, uh, to go about doing it. So, Tony, uh, one of the things that uh, you might think about is taking that uh, message. And, again, you always want to maintain um, the support that you're getting with programs. But you want to help uh, craft things so that you don't blend in. So, unlike our first two cuttlefish who are working with their camouflage, your purpose now is to how is it that you stand out. So, Thinking about the um, ways that you're not going to blend in, you can try new messages. So um, crafting the language that your executive director is working with is a great way to start, but then you can also create supportive materials or supportive uh, messages that go around that particular um, end of your letter so that uh, you're getting multiple bangs for that particular buck, right? So try some new messages. And a thing that's kind of cool is that uh, when you're thinking about donor acquisition at this time of year, and if you've got an executive director who is who's dedicated to, to creating that end of year component, donor acquisition lets you try new messages that um, your supporters, because they're already inclined to, for season of giving, are more likely to make a gift. So you know that you've got your executive directors covering your covering with the tried and true message now. If you're focusing on donor acquisition or adding to your herd, um, you can try out other ways of um, doing that. A neat thing that you can add, trying something new, is to ask people specifically to give the gift of a donation. Remember we had, I think it was 51% of people were, would be likely to give a gift instead, a gift of a, a donation rather than a, a, a holiday gift um, at this time. Well, if you've got that kind of inclination in the population, imagine what that's going to do for your organization if you actually ask people to do that. Again, they're already thinking about it. They're ready. All they need is that little, hey, I'm a good choice for that kind of gift. Um, 
So you can put that together there. Now, I want you to be really creative here when you're thinking about trying something new. Because even though this is holiday time and, it, and gifts tend to be one-off, think about offering the gift of a monthly subscription or a monthly gift that lasts throughout the year that has that much bigger impact. Um, it's a pretty neat way, again, to um, capitalize on the intention for giving a gift, but also building up that support throughout the entire year. And monthly um, support is a very, very significant way to shift the, the um, support for your organization and help balance out your cash flow. I mean, we see a great influx of cash here at the end of the year um, and the beginning of the year, and sometimes it gets a little thin there towards uh, middle of the year or end of fiscal year if we're working on a six-month um, fiscal year. So think about um, a monthly subscription, and uh, you can really maximize that impact if that's something new that you want to try. Now, another thing that's out there at end of year that everybody's talking about but is worth... Um, pointing out, again, is, is this don't overlook the tax incentives. Remember, people are putting their end-of-year plans together. They want to make sure that they've gotten their, um, their charitable allotment or their, their, their deduction in line, even though every single cause certainly can provide that tax benefit. You can also just add that as a secondary message in your campaigns, reminding people. Remember, it's just like asking people to share a retweet, asking people to make a gift to your organization in honor of somebody else or on behalf of somebody else. Well, don't for, just remind them that, you, that they get that tax benefit. It's a great way just to say, hey, this is a benefit. You don't even have to necessarily make it an ask. But it's another great way to, to, um, to put those together. Um, this is about the only time of year, too, that a tax message actually works. So if it's working, go ahead and use it. You're not going to use it during the rest of the year. Go for it. The other thing that you want to think about is, is starting some new programs, right? Um, it's end of year. You've got all kinds of creativity that's available to you, and people are going to be reacting in different ways. Well, add something new. If you're going to start a, a new fundraising or a new giving program this year, you're going to measure it next year. You're going to, this will be your test year, and then you can start to measure it each year to year to year. Um, I worked with an organization, and we had no, very little new acquisition that was available to the organization. It was a very specific um, thing that it did, and only about 2% of the population would ever be interested in supporting this particular kind of organization. So at the end of the year, we knew that, that was we could open the gates and we could work on donor acquisition. So what we created was a special campaign, and we included a collectible. Um, as a thank you gift, and for the different levels of, of gifts in this one particular end of year campaign, um, you could you would get a different kind of thank you gift, um, and it, and we repeated it so you could collect them over the years. And we started. What was the lovely thing about end of year and acquisition and starting a whole new program is is that we started with the purpose of acquiring new donors. And then during the year, you're going to work with those donors. You're going to communicate with them to convert them into other kinds of supporters. So they might be annual fund supporters, and they might be um, different kinds of patrons. Um, but they started, this is their point of entry here with this particular campaign. Now, we also had the tried and true true believers who only participated in the, in the end of your holiday uh, campaigns. So you're going to, you, that gives you the opportunity to develop a very specific different market. And you can create some kind of, again, um, memorabilia or uh, memento to really make the season special and special as a relationship between um, the donor and your organization so that they remember you um, from year to year. So starting a new program is also a great way to, um, to enhance those messages. What's up next? That's a good idea, Heidi. A collectible is a good way to reward somebody so they come back every year. I mean, you give somebody a reward, and they're they're more likely to to donate again. <laughs> well, thinking of rewards, I'm, it looks like we got some folks who would like some Scooby Snack now. Now these are huskies, but what are they doing with it? Why, why are we looking at a dog sled? <laughs> well, racing huskies are amazing animals. Um, I have a friend who's a veterinarian that works the Iditarod race every year as a vet at one of the checkpoints along the way. All the dogs get checked at each checkpoint. Um, did you know that, that those dogs are trained so well that if they lose the musher on, on the course, so let's go of the sled or falls off the sled, those dogs will continue on to the checkpoint at racing speed and stop when they get to the checkpoint 
do their thing and wait for the guy to, to get caught up with them. It's amazing. <laughs> um, that brings us to our next question. It's a team question. Uh, Nani W asks, how can I get teams of people to fundraise for my organization? Teams. Yes, that is a great question, Nani. Um, recruiting volunteers as teams um, this time of year is easy and hard. I mean, it's because people are, are getting together. It's, uh, it's easier to recruit a team that way. But we're really, really busy. So it, that's the give and take. Uh, the way to make it work best is, as we said earlier, is to make it fun. Uh, make it a game. Don't, don't underestimate the power of gamification. Um, focus on the fun aspect of getting together and the camaraderie. You got to remember these people aren't professional fundraisers. I mean, maybe you do have teams of professional fundraisers that you can recruit this time of year. If, if that's the case, you're probably not asking this question. Um, the rest of us who are mere mortals are out asking friends and relatives and anybody we can find who's interested in our cause to, to join up and be part of a team. So uh, remove the pressure to produce. Uh, it's, it's the camaraderie, being part of the cause, and if you let teams compete with one another in raising, they'll, they'll work harder at it, and, and you will get the reward you're looking for. You also want to reward their production. So don't have a, a prize for the lead team. Make sure everybody is rewarded along the way, and everybody gets prizes and lots and lots and lots of reinforcement that, that help make it fun. The prizes and incentives that you're giving away, they don't have to be expensive. Um, they, they could even be free. I mean, you can give away the, the closest parking spot at your organization that's closest to the facility. And if uh, your board has teams, um, the, the board member with who wins the contest gets the closest parking spot. It costs you absolutely nothing. Um, all kinds of other things you can give away this time of year. Movie passes, theater tickets, uh, all the leftover auction items from all the auctions you've had. Uh, that's good stuff to give away. Um, use social media and your website to shout out to your followers. This is a great way to incentivize teams. Um, you can keep in touch with people throughout the day, throughout the week, from now through the end of the year. On social media, a lot easier than you can without it. I mean, it, it's a way to constantly stay in touch with people. They're at the end of a cell phone. So get everyone else to use their followers and get, get your teams oriented on social media so that they're attracting their friends. Finally, you can use some of the, the fundraising platforms. Um, Heidi, what are some of the names of those? I'm Oh, we've got, we can run the gamut from first giving to just giving to um, GoFundMe. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. A lot of those are set up uh, already for you to, to establish teams. So you can sign up on one of those, establish an account, set your teams up, and, and you're good to go. And you've got a management system built in. It's pretty, pretty slick. Oh. <laughs> David, that kind of looks like it might be a bird from Jurassic Park. Yeah. What, what's up with the bird? <laughs> isn't, isn't that <laughs> awesome? not too late. Isn't that awesome? They, they were on uh, Animal Planet last night. I saw these guys. They live in Australia. Um, this, this is a cassowary. Uh, it's, you see it's got that horn on its head? That's a horn, actual hard horn, like a, a cow or a And it's all broken off at the end. This one's been fighting. He's been in, he's battle-tested. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing. Let's, it looks a lot like a turkey. <laughs> um, you know, it's got the turkey stuff hanging down in front of them, but this one's horn isn't, isn't beat up. That's what the full horn looks like. These things are huge. It's, it's like six feet tall at the, at the height of its back. Um, if it kicks you, the claws are big enough that it would just rip you in half. It's amazing. So I, I thought, this bird was appropriate since we're, we're coming up on American Thanksgiving. Turkeys are usually on the dinner menu. 
And surprisingly, a cassowary, I think, looks like a big, really, really mean turkey. That brings <laughs> us to our next question. Uh, Jake M. asks, I'm afraid we've waited too long to try anything else for our end-of-year fundraising. Is there anything that we can do that's quick and easy? <laughs> Well, Jake, there's good news for you. It's just like uh, our castaway says, it's not too late. You are still, you still have time. Yes, you can launch um, some initiatives. And especially, especially at this time of year, um, you want to be a little bit agile because if you found that the initiatives that you have launched haven't produced the way that they need to do, um, yes, there are things that you can do to help plug the gap or to increase the fundraising that you're doing. So what are some of the things that you can do that are easy to do? One, you're going to take a look at your calendar, and you've got about three weeks left. So you've got um, maybe a week or so that you can plan or think it through and prepare the materials, but you can also carry these off very, very quickly. So think about personalized email campaign. And it's just like those holiday cards at the end of the year, or maybe you'll have um, a signing where you've got your board members that come in, and you'll have... Um, your end of your messages that are signed. Well, it's the same thing that you do on email, writing a little bit of a personal message or adapting um, your email campaign um, to putting that putting that personal message together. If you create a landing page or if you, if you take one of those fundraising platforms um, that we talked about, you know, Razoo is also a really good, and CrowdRise, very good team-building fundraising websites. Um, but it, say you might have a campaign landing page that you're going to throw up a, a, a campaign quickly, um, and you might uh, have the landing page that your personalized emails are going to drive that traffic to, so that you can you can publicit you can publicize your landing page. But again, you might have a very special email campaign um, that goes out to your donors to let them know of this special thing. Now, guys, don't forget um, we've been working hard over the last handful of years. There's a new initiative, but Giving Tuesday after Black Friday ah, um, yes. is coming up, yay, on <clears throat> December 3rd. So, so we've got all kinds of messages that are going to be going out um, over, the, over the next week to prepare for that, or even last-minute launches that might happen on Monday, December 2nd, um, coming right back after that Thanksgiving holiday um, in the States here. But Giving Tuesday is an international um, initiative where there's a lot more of awareness that's raised for charitable gifts and for charitable uh, organizations who are fundraising at that time. So take that particular theme and um, go to town. Let people know, raise awareness, let them know that you're participating, that you wholly support it. Um, it's a great way to tie into um, an, an issue and an idea that people are already working on. Don't forget, uh, get a gift. That's an easy thing that you can launch just on an email campaign or with a landing page or Putting a little um, extra button on your um, on your current uh, donate now site. Change the button to say "Give a gift" um, or "Give a gift in honor." Remember, buy. Uh, remember again, fifty one percent of people will make a charitable gift rather than purchase uh, a present for an individual. So, get that on there, and don't forget to get a subscription versus get a, an individual one off gift. Great way to do it. Um, if you're thinking about an email campaign, remember the email campaign, especially at the end of the year, is not going to be a one-shot deal. You're not going to write one letter. You're going to um, put that uh, message together, and you're probably going to send it in multiple different um, formats. So get the calendar out, and if you've got three weeks left, um, you're going to have at least three different um, installments for that email campaign. And you're going to change your message a little bit and share some exciting news. Share a holiday message. Share something that's happening with your program in each of those installments to raise awareness for that particular um, for that for that email and that email campaign. So give yourself a little extra time. Um, when you're writing that, um, and then spread that out so that you're timing those messages to, to, um, to really hit. You can have a contest. Um, again, that scavenger hunt thing that happens at the end of the year, you can do that again. If you've got a team-based idea, that's something that's quick and easy to put together. You can also empower volunteers to do something like this um, and uh, ask them for those ideas and see if you've got um, a handful of folks who might be interested in spearheading a fun um a fun contest or a fun, uh, fun game, you can, you can pretty much um, really do well as long as you provide the landing page or the, the bucket you know, for, for the gifts to be received. Um, this is a great time for volunteers to go out and have fun fundraising on your behalf. So make it a contest. You can have a thank you or a celebration event. That's a, again, here we are at, um, in the States. We're coming up on Thanksgiving. Everybody's thinking about saying thank you 
and being grateful. Um, we've had you know gratitude month through the month of November. That's been happening um, as well. We'll make a little event out of it for your cause and make sure that it goes beyond Thanksgiving. And it moves into the December time frame of saying thank you for all of the support that you've received or making a particular point to, to communicate um, in multiple different ways how it is that you're grateful. You can have, again, think teams. You can have a team of people just that their purpose is to thank people. Um, and that's a great way, again, you're building awareness and you might have an additional supporting uh, message um, that goes into your fundraising campaign as part of your thank you or your celebration. What have we achieved this year? What have we achieved at this time? What are we achieving next week with your fantastic support? Right? Those are some of the messages you, you can do. You, don't forget, you can actually put together and launch an online campaign. You can do that very easily. You can do it very um, cost effectively. There is um, There are several platforms out there with no kind of long-term commitment that you can... Um, Put your, put your piece together using your images and your, your logo and your messages. All of the information that you have that's out there to do, put that together and make it available. You've got now a URL. You've got a collection point. Um, and just keep it small. Um, you can put that together again. If maybe you put a little mini campaign together for the next three weeks that has a little mini gold. Maybe you want to raise $1,000, $5,000, something, something that you can do, uh, again, kind of on a micro level. But that... Um, you can run mini micros all at the same time. You can do that, again, with very little commitment um, and resources. Uh, and the only thing that you want to think about is the time that you're going to need to communicate or make sure that everybody shares, right, your link to your landing page. Um, you can also have a last week campaign. Um, end of year, we've got that dead time between the Christmas holiday and New Year's. Um, if you uh, bring up your messages maybe the week before the Christmas holiday, I think that's December 25th, the week prior to that, um, and then your campaign actually will take place during that in-between week. And what you will do is that you will let people know the progress of what it is that you're making towards New Year's or having a New Year's campaign. What what It's kind of like the thermometer, how, what, what kind of uh, money is being raised and, and putting that together or making, again, a small initiative that you can add that little um, bump. You can also make a, a last-minute present campaign. Remember, we've got uh, folks who, who do their shopping at the last minute for holidays. And uh, this is a great way that you can get on that um, day before the holiday um, reminder that's out there. So don't forget, that's a great message that will relieve many people's anxiety as far as what are they going to get for Uncle Sam who's got, you know, everything and what in the world could he possibly need? Well, here's something that's really unusual um, and would be a great way to to honor Uncle Sam. So um, thinking about it's not too late for that. So let me see. We're going to, I want you again now wiggle your fingers a little bit. We've got a couple of questions that have come in during our session. And I want you to go ahead and as we're, we're looking at our questions here, go ahead and ask anything that happens to be on your mind for end of your fundraising or um, uh, fundraising in general. Make them hard. David and I really like to kind of figure them out for you. So We've got a question here from Carol, and Carol says, Carol asks, she says, if our year-end letters have not yet not yet gone out, should we wait until Thanksgiving is over, and then, okay, so she's an in a states-based organization, and then mail them out? Would they be more likely to be overlooked during the week of Thanksgiving? Okay, Carol, that's a great question, because now you're looking at really tweaking timing, and there's a couple of suggestions um, that I have for you. Um, one is, is that the earlier that the letter um, gets out, the better. The longer that you wait, the more volume of stuff that's that's actually hitting and that's out there. And honestly, it, it's kind of interesting how people are dealing with this um, is it too early question um, is, is interesting. I, I actually received something that I, I enjoyed this week, which was a holiday card. And I, after, you know, my eyeballs were almost rolling back into my head going, it's too early for holiday cards to start. I opened it up, and it actually wasn't a holiday card. It was a fall seasonal card. And the fall seasonal card was letting me know that um, an individual had made a gift to an organization just to support um, during, you know, in honor of fall. And I looked at this, and it was, a, it was a business that was sending me this card. And I looked at this, and I thought that was particularly clever to do that early. One, because they missed the, um, the noise that happens and, and that crush of, of mail that happens. Um, but they've also taken a tried and true thing and they used that gift. They made a gift on behalf 
um, to do that. So it was a very clever approach. Now, Carol, when you're asking about the specific timing of your, your mail, so the first comment is get it out as early as possible. The next thing that I would suggest um, that you think about scheduling is that you're going to schedule a follow-up installment. Um, so if you, if you get your email, if you get your mail out now you, um, and it arrives during the week of Thanksgiving, it's not necessarily going to be overlooked because I can tell you that the mail volume is going to pick up significantly um, that following week, that first week of December, and it's only going to increase all the way through the month. So get it out early, but also put in your budget and plan timing for a follow-up uh, installment the, the week to 10 days after. Maybe 10 days is a little bit too long um, to make sure that that is received or not overlooked. And as a reminder, you can probably actually schedule two installments of that to make sure that it's heard. So, uh, David, what would you suggest? Um, another thing you could do along the lines of that, the piece that you got, Heidi, <clears throat> is to make that available to your corporate donor base. Uh, ask them to give gifts to your organization on behalf of their clients. So, Heidi got the piece from... Uh, a company where she is a customer uh, and they gave on her behalf to a philanthropic organization um, ask companies who are giving to you already to do that with their client base you can even make the piece available for them you know we'll, we'll give you the cards um, if you'll send them out and make gifts on behalf of all of your clients it's good economically for the company it's it's good uh PR for them. Um, nice thing to do all the way around. You bet. And and you're and not forgetting. I mean, as much as you as a nonprofit organization are struggling with being heard at the end of the year, so are the so are your corporate supporters. So, um, teaming up and offering them that kind of support with their messages or helping them look like a good corporate citizen um, is a really wonderful benefit that they have in the relationship with with your cause and doing that. Okay, Carol also asked, she says, explain a landing page. David, you want to take this one? Okay. What Land is a landing page? Landing page. page. Landing pa that's a great question. Uh, a landing page is a page on your website, standalone page. And by standalone, I mean it doesn't have any of the navigation that's on the rest of your pages. So there aren't buttons to go to the home page or the about page or the contact us page. It's just a single page and you use the URL or the address for that page in email or in social media or in a print piece that goes out. And if somebody types in that, that URL or that address, they go specifically to that landing page. And since there's no other navigation there, their choices are do what I'm being asked to do on this page or leave. So you do that in order to get a high volume of people converting and actually doing what you ask them to do on that page. And what you're asking them to do is to donate. So that is a donate page. And it, it has your donate button on it and walks them through the whole process of, of taking their donation. But the only thing they can do there is donate. You don't want to have any other distractions involved. And it's just that one standalone page. So that's, that's what a landing page is. And it is what it sounds like when you say landing page. If you think of like a helicopter landing pad um, or or a runway, that that's it's got one purpose, <laughs> and you can't drive your cards on it. You can't you can, you can hover and you can drop down and and um, yep. you can you can do the one function that's there for landing pages um, too. As you're thinking uh, about it, that are easy because um, if you set up an online campaign, your campaign page is a landing page. Um, it's it's separate. Its only purpose is to support the campaign, uh, and it has information about your philanthropic activity there. So if you don't have a webmaster, if you're not um, familiar with how to build landing pages for your, your site yourself, um, or your organization doesn't have the staff that can help with that marketing page development, that's something that you can, as an individual, very easily create um, as part of an online campaign. Um, that again, it's the place that people go to when they're when they're asked to do something. Okay, so I want you again. Every, make sure that you can find that questions box. If we've got any more questions here for end of year fundraising that rocks. Uh, make sure that you type that on in, and we will certainly get to it. Remember, David and I love to have the really tough ones. So whatever it is that you're struggling with, if you've got a question, if you're weighing and measuring whether to go one way or another, 
um, whether to launch a specific idea or um, campaign process, let us know. We'll be happy to take it on and talk through some of the finer, finer points of it. Now, if we don't get to your question today, or if you have a question that hits you in the middle of the night and you say, I should have asked that in the master circle, what am I going to do? Well, don't worry. You can always email us um, to our, our questions. You can also head to that um, URL, the mosaicmpd.com master circle topic request. That is a place where you can easily, easily ask a question at any particular time, and we will certainly include that uh, in our next sessions or in our next sessions as they're coming up. Now, I have a question for you since we happen to be talking about questions. I do want you to pull open that question box because I, I need to take a poll. Now, here we are. We're talking about end of year. We know that um, things get a little bit crazy at the end of the year with what's happening with work, with, with what's happening with events, with, what, with what's happening with your family. And we have our next session scheduled for December 18th. And I'm very curious if you would kindly open up that question box and let me know, is that is attending a session in December 18, is that something that would really be helpful um, here at the end of the year, or is that something that would be better that we would want to present in January once kind of the holiday craziness has settled down? So let me know. So just give me a yes, type in the box. If yes, if December 18th would be a great day for Master Circle, um, or no, if you'd rather wait till January, please. Go ahead and pull open that box, and we are taking a vote. All right, so uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, no, thank you. It looks like great. Okay, make sure. Now, if you can't, oh, yay, coaching. Yay, Sharon. Yay. Okay. Well, keep it, keep, keep the answers coming. That's great, guys, because the, the feedback's really helpful as we're starting to plan out for our year. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to watch your email. So I'll let you know the final uh, the final decision as we're looking at the calendar and we're looking at our topics. Take a keep keep your eye on the email. Now, um, what's going to happen next uh, at this particular uh, session here? Don't forget if you've got more questions, go ahead and submit them. Don't forget you can sign up for our blog. Um, swing by the blog. We've actually got several articles um, there now that will give you some great ideas for end of year. Um, fundraising and different things that you can do um, to really you know, energize your, your campaign, but also things that you can do to get ready for next year. Um, it's great to go through this from frenetic time, and once you actually come up for air, you think, oh gosh, but we've still got next year that has to happen. We've got to do some planning. So um, take a peek, swing by the blog, take a peek. Um, you'll find great information there. Now, I do need your help. Um, we've got a vote that's going on. Um, after the session closes, a survey is going to pop up on your screen, so please keep your browser open. If you could answer a couple of questions about the Master Circle for us to help us make it really um, that much better. And also, I, I need your votes. We've got topics available for the next um, several sessions, and I'm very interested to find out what it is that would be most important that you would want to hear about. So cast your vote. Um, if none of the topics look good, we've also got a place where you can fill it in and let us know what you'd really like to hear about. So keep your eyes open on your screen as we shut down because you'll get that survey. So stay in touch. It's been great having you here today. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed our session together. Um, David? Yep, had a great time. Appreciate all of you coming. I really appreciate that. I can't wait to see what kind of fantastic ideas you take away and the end of your fundraising that you have that's now going to be heads and tails above everybody else that's out there. And don't forget, you stop by the website, visit us on Facebook. We're, um, we've got great stuff that's going out on our social media um, these days, so keep an eye on that. Join, join the conversation on Twitter. Again, don't forget to stop by the blog for great information and send us some email. We'd love to hear what's happening, happening with your cause and how your end of your fundraising is going. So thanks so much, guys. Sit tight for the survey. We'll catch you on the next one.